Good morning all. Here we're going to experiment with the DS12887A real-time clock. Now there's a pitfall here that we have to be real careful with and this is the experiment that we're going to perform. On pin 21 there's an input called RAM clear bar. That's an active low input right there. And what happens, I'll show you in the experiment, if we put this DS12887A on a programmer and try to read the data out of that IC, that RAM clear pin will be asserted and it will erase the data in your device. <laughs> now, now, we see these parts in uh, Heisman operator panels and they hold the CMOS data. So, <laughs> we have to be real careful when, uh, when we read the data out of there to save that data. I'll show you what, how to uh, prevent that from happening. Here we go. I'm gonna open up the Top Max program. Let's make sure we turn it on there. Yeah, good. Now we're gonna go and select that IC from the listing. Let's go up here and find Dallas. Are. And we're going to look for DS12887. Click OK. There we go. Now we'll set this down in the top max and close the gate. Read the data. And we'll go to the editor. Now up here, it's the first 13 bytes are the clock and calendar data. And that usually does not change until we program it. But you'll see down here we have all Fs. This is the RAM space right here. Uh, let me move the camera closer to the screen right here and you can see what we're going to do. Now, as part of our experiment, we're going to enter some arbitrary data. Just numbers, letters, symbols. We'll put uh, three rows in. Now, let's close the editor. This is in the computer still. We'll close that. Now we're going to enter it into the Dallas. The DS12887A. It's been programmed into the Dallas. Let's read it back out. Now we've pulled the data from the DS12887A into the computer. Let's go to the editor and see if our data that we entered is still there. Ta, where'd it go? <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> Look up here. That data, that three rows of data that we programmed into that device is now missing. We have all F. <sighs> now how can we prevent that from happening? Let me show you what I've got here. Let me pull this IC off the programmer. Can you all see that? Right here is pin 21 sitting there by itself. That is the RAM clear bar pin. Now what you want to do, let's see if I can stay in the frame, is get you an IC socket and cut pin 21 so that it no longer sits in the programmer. There we are. Let me set that down in the programmer and we'll perform the same experiment again and see if the data is now retained. Let's go back up here to this is address hex 10 right there. 
Let's enter some more data, symbols. We'll enter three rows again. And it doesn't matter this is, if this is valid data or not. There we go. Now, the data has been entered into the buffer editor. Let's close the editor out. We're going to program that data into the DS12887A. There it is. Now, let's read it out. We'll click on the read button. And that data has been pulled out of the DS12887A and entered into the computer. Now let's go to the editor and see if our data is still there. Look at that. <laughs> there it is. This is what we entered. It's still there. So, in the future, if you work with the DS12887A and you don't want to lose your data, <laughs> make sure you separate pin 21 from the programmer with that IC socket and cut pin 21. Now we see these devices in Heisman operator panels. That's where we see most of them. And they hold the CMOS data for the operating system. There you go, folks. <laughs> Did you like that experiment? I hope that uh, saves you a little bit of heartache in the future if you ever work on this IC, the DS12887A. Now there is a version, uh, DS12887, that does not use that pin. Pin 21 is a no connect. So um, I'll put both these data sheets up at the end of the video and you can, you can see the differences between the two. All right, folks. Hope you all having a good day. And we'll see you next time.